Hey all, Banks here. So I just got this notification on Discord that we have some OTA balance updates, which stand for over the air. They're gonna happen before a patch. Uh, super excited. It's nice to see that they're being very quick to continue changing cards. I haven't really dove into anything, so we're just gonna do that live, get my honest reaction to you, you know what's going on and just give you this update on what's going on. So for those unaware, OTA stands for over the air. First to hot fix changes. Uh, outside of our usual semi-monthly patch schedule, this week we're making four changes in an ongoing effort to encourage a more diverse spread of decks, individual cards being played. To set expectations, this patch won't cure all the metagame's ills, it should represent an improvement until our next action pack patch. So I like this idea, just get quick things moving. I've always talked about rapid changes in games like this uh, are, are absolutely fantastic. Uh, so Red School, knocking it down one more powered from 513 to 512. is going to lower the power output of that Shuri Red School deck up to 24 total power. Um, honestly, just probably really good. Let's see what they say. As our previous notes discussed, we last suggested Red School specifically for the Shuri Taskmaster interaction. Goal is to keep his strength otherwise flat or even slightly improved to see how things settled. Uh, once we've softened Thanos' grip in the metagame, we know how players disagreed with that approach and weighed that feedback. We continue to debate internally how aggressive our balance update should be. Uh, yeah, well, we, I think a lot of people just want Shuri to be maybe not nuked, but but really brought down. In that case, things settled in an improved metagame. Decks based around Shuri and Taskmaster are still too strong. Recognize Shuri is still clearly the true offender here. We have a balance change for Shuri ready. Very interesting. So, so they do have it ready. Probably going to come at the end of next month. Um, however, that change to Shuri needs to be patched to be implemented, so it's probably something that's more complex and uh, not just like changing numbers, which is what these OTA ones can do. Uh, we do expect Shuri to remain viable after the Red School tweak. We don't want to drastically nerf multiple innocent cards when we have an upcoming nerf to Shuri. It's fair. Which changes to Shuri is live? Will we revert this, this or previous Red School changes? Maybe. Cool. I like that they're just being open and honest about that. Just explaining, hey, you know, we might change uh, Red Skull back later. Once we change Shuri, we'll see. Sunspot, 1-1 one, one to 1-0. One, the end of each turn, gain plus one power for each unspent energy. So just lowering a single early power for Sunspot. Uh, I know Willow, who is a big proponent of the Mr. Negative Jane Foster archetype, is going to be salivating seeing this because just another card with zero power to add to that archetype, just like Hitmonkey just was, just like Kitty Pride just was. So we might hit a critical mass for that Mr. Negative Jane Foster deck is uh, incredibly powerful. I'm definitely going to play that uh, once, once Kitty Pride comes back into the game. It sounds really cool. Sunspot is one of the most heavily played cards in the game. The Y is obvious. He's strong. Series 2, powerful synergies with other cards like She-Hulk and Infinon. Opportunity cost for having him in your deck is also very low, since you only have to have one spare energy on any turn to unlock his strength floor. All this adds up to a solid criteria for a minor nerf, bringing spells for less played cards. We need buffs, man. We need to buff, buff one drops to, to make this happen. You can't just, you can't just cut the top. Uh, but I, I definitely agree with this. Uh, and Kitty, I mean, Kitty Pride is just looking so, so good now. We were curious in wondering she Hulk have any impact on Sunspot, but truthfully, we didn't expect any changes. Soon, we'd be making this adjustment sooner rather than later. We did reevaluate some other changes to Sunspot, but for Series 2 cards, we want to retain the elegance of the original design. <laughs> yeah, maybe they were thinking, you know, if you end the turn with Unspent Energy plus one, uh, that would make the card really weak, but uh, we'll see. Uh, as a default card in both Shuri and Thanos, this change should impact those decks a bit more than others too. Interesting. Uh, Shadow King! Let's go, Shadow King buffs. 4-3 three to 3-3. Three, three. Uh, same exact effect. Uh, I think this is a great choice. I mean, cutting a card at an entire energy level in a game like Marvel Sap is crazy. You only have 21 energy over the entire game, so cutting down one energy is nuts. I mean, look at Scorpion went from 3-3 three, three to 2-2, two, two, went from unplayable garbage to one of the best two drops in the entire game. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Shadow King. Kind of interesting. Give, give us uh, maybe a chance to to fight against Shuri. I still think Shadow King probably needs a change to like a global presence and maybe go back to a 4-3. But we'll see. Shadow King's whole purpose is to fight back against exactly the kind of thing that Shuri is doing. This card simply released too weak to be considered for most decks. We recognize his status as a Series 4 card that's used to answer powerful decks rather than fuel them. Might limit his potential to impact the metagame. However, we're happy to just give him this boost and see where things land from there. Perfect. Unplayable garbage, make him a little bit stronger. Yo, a very similar century. 4-8, uh, you can't play this at the right location. I reveal minus 8 power void at the right location. To a 4-10 that makes a negative 10. Interesting. 
So they didn't just give it a power boost, they also made the Void bigger. It's actually pretty impactful for things like uh, things like the Viper deck. This might make Sentry pretty good. Now he's uh, obviously vulnerable to Shang-Chi, but we will see. Sentry's a card that just hasn't found a great home yet. While these number changes aren't an obviously impactful buff, it does increase the potential reward for running Sentry and potential damage donating your Void with Viper can do. It's just a change we're interested to see. Yeah, I think that something like this is really good. Uh, overall, I, I really, really like this. I think that they'll, the, they'll go into it a little bit more after that. So, so we're going to we're gonna touch on that. Uh, but let's just quickly go over what I think. I think the Red Skull one is fine. Obviously, because they're going to have a big Shuri nerf later. And they were very upfront about that. I think that's cool. Good, good, just going to be generally good for the game. Uh, Sunspot, I think that's good. Uh, you still need to buff one drops. I hope they do find ways to buff things like Baku Angel. All these other one drops. Just, just be... Just make some one drops of one three. Just see what happens. See what happens if some of them become planned. I think that would be really cool. Uh, Shadow King, love it. Uh, they maybe could have gone further and made it a bigger, uh, more universal thing, but just just you know cutting it. I think it's really really smart. Sentry, really like it. Not sure if it really makes too big of an impact because now being vulnerable to Chong Chi sometimes going from four eight to four ten is just bad. Uh, but we'll see. It, just, it seems really cool. So uh, awesome. Just in general, love these quick. Uh, uh, rapid, rapid changes. Okay, our balance future. Speaking of changes we're interested in trying out, we have an exciting announcement about the future of card balance for Marvel Snap. Starting with our upcoming April patch, currently scheduled for 418, we'll be making weekly changes. Very cool, love me some weekly changes. Um, I think that's interesting. Always spicing up the metagame. As a content creator, that does mean that uh, my, my my videos are quickly going to become uh, irrelevant to, to for many reasons, but uh, should still be really fun. I, I think that uh, making a, a nice, fresh metagame uh, as quickly as possible is awesome. Our patch every four weeks will continue to release on Tuesdays, include card updates as well, but we're uh, intervening weeks with features live on Thursdays with OTA. So on, on Thursdays, we're gonna have OTA. We know this is just the sort of balance, attention, and prioritization that many of you have clamored for, so thanks for your passionate feedback. It's been a multi-team effort uh, to keep the process buttoned up for the last month. We hope you're excited as well. Go ahead and address some questions. Why Thursdays? Why not? <laughs> Early Thursdays, baby. Actually, Thursdays are just a good day to slide to the rest of our schedule. I'm sure the QA team has enough time to verify these updates. Also, avoid stepping on new card releases or hot feature locations. Cool. What kind of changes will we make? Our OTA tool will give us the ability to make changes within about a week or two, but it's limited to what we can change. We we'll continue to develop the tool, expand its limitations, but for now you can expect weekly changes to numbers only. So no changes to actual effects, no changes to word, but numbers. As you can see, even with like century, the, the numbers can be within the text too, which, which is pretty interesting. Will we be nerfing or buffing cards? Uh, as you can see with Century and Shadow King, we do not end up buff cards through OTA. In fact, we're going to guarantee at least one buff in each of these updates. Yo, yes, claps, claps, claps. Love that. This is a method to balance the metagame with nerfs, but only when deemed necessary. How many cards will change each week? Target is two to four cards. Love it. How will we pick which cards to change? Uh, we have a list of buffs that we're making to existing content. We're prioritizing them based on how we expect the individual changes affect the metagame or even combine with the new cards and locations but we'll shift them around based on the live metagame why not just make all those changes now one of the things we're worried with balance is how much change is too much we're changing more than a handful of cards at a time for a while now we think that a good thing because we're eager to digest plus pacing out these changes lets us lightly fresh the game periodically rather than shaking it off. Yeah, I love that. Just keep changing things little by little. Um, and then, you, you know, assess the data. I'm, I'm a really big, big fan of this. How long will we do this? Plan for a trial period in May, depending on how it goes, may continue onward. I, I wish they would just said, you know, we're, we're gonna do this for the foreseeable future, but, uh, you know, <laughs> as, as we've we found with most card game consumers, they have no idea what they actually want. Uh, that's all we've got for now. Hope you're stoked for future of weekly balance updates. We'll see you in a couple weeks as we turn the page on new snapter i hate that <laughs> in the book of digital balance like chapter yeah you get it okay but they, they kind of made it up for me with the yeah you get it because that's something ex actually exactly something that i would do uh dude i'm really excited uh, i love hearing weekly card changes i love that they're saying that they're going to focus on buffs that's something i've been calling for a lot uh, i think that these changes are going to be fun and fresh uh, we'll see when they actually take place and what happens but uh, yeah, I'm stoked for it. Let me know in the comments down below which card should get buffed, which card should get nerfed, and how you feel about these changes. 
As always, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe down below for daily Marvel Snap content, and catch you live at twitch.tv slash binks underscore plays. See you next time. Watch that one too.